sorry, um, everybody, for bringing us down. <laughs> Let's just watch that bunny again. Ho hold up, wait. What? Oh no, what, we're what live. Is... It's too late. We're gonna not. What, the stream what... is gonna have no context at all. It's great. What does this button do? I'm sorry. Let, hold on. Let me hit this purple button. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that one. Here. Ah, yes, that one. Thank you for the sub. Anyways, yes, welcome everybody to the third session of Akagi. Sorry for a little bit of serious uh, silliness there at the beginning. Um, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into things. And what I've offered to the players here is that if they want to do an out-of-character or in-character uh, recap so that uh, I don't have to, I am going to award them some additional momentum. So open floor, uh, would anyone like to give a very brief overview of uh, what we did last time? I believe we drafted Zarya to do this. Do you actually want me to read my whole recap or do you want me to give you the TLDR? Uh, whichever you feel comfortable with. I can read the whole thing. It's pretty long, but that's okay. You'll get the whole thing. Nice. Ship's log, start date 39173.4. Lieutenant Commander Zarya recording. The Akagi made its way to the Baratus system to perform a routine study of the planets to locate potential Federation colony or outpost sites. We were made aware ahead of time that the system is quite close to Gorn territory, and so took precautions to ensure the safety of the crew. We set out all five of our executive class shuttlecraft, three of them to simultaneously conduct a survey of all three planets, with the other two ships on patrol. Captain Miller and Lieutenant Commander Riley stayed with the Akagi, while Zines was assigned to the patrol. Although our system scans indicated that there were no humanoid species on any of the planets, due to my previous first contact experience, I was assigned to lead the shuttlecraft of Baratus III, the Class M planet. Our preliminary scans showed that while the oxygen content in the atmosphere was lower than other similar Class M planets, it was still breathable and the planet was safe to land on. Our sensors reported animals only as large as the Earth possum, with no evidence of humanoids. We decided to land on the planet to continue the survey. On the patrol, Zines noted that the sensors on his executive class shuttlecraft were malfunctioning, showing each ship doubled or tripled as ghost images. He attempted to diagnose the sensor problems, but was unable to determine the cause of the problem and radioed back to the Akagi. Captain Miller received a report indicating that there have been a string of attacks of strange vessels in our area, with one freighter even being attacked and damaged by the unknown ship. It is unknown who the ship belongs to, but it does have disruptors. Cyril's scan of the system indicates that there was a warp-capable ship that was not the Akagi that was in the system recently. The survey on the first planet discovered deep deposits of uh, Rytalin, while the survey at the second planet discovered nothing of interest. My survey landed onto the planet, where we were immediately greeted by a strong floral scent reminiscent of roses and lavender. The forest floor was covered in many colored flowers, which we seemed to have crushed in landing. Lieutenant Vran suggested that we do an additional scan of the flowers to verify that they are not a security risk. Our scans of the flowers indicated that they and the surrounding floor are crystalline in nature, but not sentient. Tolin suggested that we attempt to communicate with the species, so I greeted the crystalline flower. No real apparent acknowledgement of the communication was picked up on, but I did appreciate the pleasant scent of the flowers. We continued with our survey of the planet until Vran noticed a Gorn battleship approaching the planet. We called back to the Akagi for backup and proceeded to leave the planet immediately. The Gorn ship pursued and we decided not to take the risk of going to warp as the Akagi was on its way and would, it would take up all of our power in order to escape. We performed evasive maneuvers until the Akagi arrived and hailed the Gorn ship just as we were being pulled in by their tractor beam. At the captain's request, I examined the log of the communication with the Gorn captain. From my experience with species with similar social structures and practices, I would say that the captain had recently gone through some sort of loss. She is comfortable within her role as captain, so I do not currently believe that she is merely an acting captain after the loss of their original captain. However, I find no reason to disbelieve her statements and consider her report to be, to her knowledge, truthful. The Gorn captain stated that one of their ships was attacked by a Starfleet vessel a few days prior. The Gorn ship sent us a data dump with records of this interaction. It appeared that the USS Pulsar was responsible for that attack. Captain Miller is familiar with the captain of the USS Pulsar, and we decided to try to meet up with them in order to investigate the issue further. The Pulsar did not respond to our hails and started to move at a faster pace to escape us. When we stopped to intercept the Pulsar, they attacked with their photon torpedoes. That is the end of my log. Alrighty, very nice. Uh, let's see, how much momentum 
Oh, did I not leave you with momentum? I thought I did. I uh, don't think we were left with any. Okay, well, have three momentum for that. Why not? Yeah, I, I remember us using it all. Gotcha. Well, now you have three. All right, so uh, sort of to, to supplement what was just said, uh, you all have indeed found the pulsar. Uh, when you attempted to contact it, it basically jumped to warp and attempted to escape. Uh, you pursued, and in the process, it fired a torpedo at you uh, at warp, which would have done uh, quite a bit of damage. And uh, through the skillful actions of your pilot, uh, I believe it was Zines, in fact, uh, you were able to dodge the torpedo. However, that is where we pick up. Uh, you all are currently at warp, uh, and the pulsar is also at warp, which means both of your shields are down at the moment. Um, and this is roughly about how far away you are from one another. Uh, but that's where we'll drop right in. Illich, before we begin, let's talk yes. about era capabilities at warp. So can we transport at warp? Yes. Uh, my understanding is that the very first, uh, warp transport was something that actually happened in the Enterprise show. Um, when they did the merging with the Columbia, I think it was a season three episode. Uh, point being that even if Enterprise wasn't a thing, uh, Montgomery Scott, to my knowledge, also worked out how to transport at warp. Um, so it's a thing. You, you can definitely do it. And what about tractor beams? Last uh, tractor beams work at warp. However, at high speeds, you risk sort of tearing whatever you're trying to tractor that sounds about right so yeah uh we're not technically in starship combat yet but uh what would you all like to do uh zines is just gonna speak up and say captain i don't know about you but i really don't like being shot at i don't need the number one let's let's open a hail or at least open a channel even if pulsar doesn't respond um, and uh, Zines will open it. Do you want me to make the roll? or Yeah, you know, because uh, even with three momentum, I'd like you guys to have a healthy pool for this. So uh, roll me a control engineering. And if someone can get the Akagi's communications in engineering, the difficulty here is a zero. I'm glad it's a zero. I can roll Akagi. All right. Uh, uh, I don't think I have an applicable focus. Uh, unless, unless you a... have something in communications, no. No, uh, just Starship Tactical, Starship Helm. Yeah, nothing like that. All right, so unfortunately, the Akagi does not assist you, but you still get two successes. Very nice. All right, so you're up to five momentum. And yeah, channel's open. Uh, go ahead, Captain. Channel's open. Captain Mayock, this is Jeff Miller. I know if you're firing at us, you have a good reason, but I want you to know... We are friendly, otherwise we'd be firing back. Let's talk about this. Whatever's going on, th there's no need to resort to violence. We can still talk this through. Okay, I'd like you to roll me a presence command. Uh, difficulty three, please. And the ship will not assist you on this, unfortunately. Would you say diplomacy? Or yeah, I'd leadership? say diplomacy or leadership could apply here. And you are at five at the moment. You guys mind if I buy two more dice? Nope, go for it. Not good. Three, three right. momentum, please. So that'll put me at four dice I'm rolling here. I see a green. Ooh, very nice. So that nice. is five successes, which means you get two momentum back. So you do get a response. Uh, and as the view screen activates, you probably figure out what's going on very quickly. Um, you do see uh, your old acquaintance, uh, Captain Miok, except that there's something a little bit off about him. And if I had to qualify it, Maybe the normal Miok, uh, you know, very clean-shaven individual. This Miok has a beard and a goatee. And uh, this Miok says, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're not surrendering. You can go shove it. 
And uh, he flicks you off, like quite literally flicks you off, and then communications cut. All right, that's all I need to hear. Commander, let's work out a way to disable that ship. Uh, working on it, Captain. And can I... Let's see what we've got for talents and such. Um, no, that probably won't work. That's for shooting torpedoes. You said disable, not destroyed. Though destroyed is disabled. I um, will say, if you cause a breach to engines, they will drop out of warp. Maybe that's a good place to start, then we could tractor them. Scale okay. 5 vessel will be difficult to break that tractor. Um, then I'll... Uh, well, then in character designs, will uh, permission to use torpedoes, Captain? Absolutely, number one. I All trust right. your aim. We, we don't want to destroy the ship. So, um, yeah. Uh, I will uh, obviously give you the threat to launch torpedoes. Mm -hmm. Are you firing um, one or a salvo? I'm going to fire a salvo. Okay, that means I get three threats. Because I have full spread, maximum yield. Ooh. Um, and we will try to go from there. Okay. So, daring or control and security? Uh, it is control security for you, and the Akagi will assist you with a weapon security. I need to know, are you specifically targeting the engines? Yes. Okay, then the difficulty, unless you have a talent that reduces it... The difficulty here is a 4, because torpedoes are a base 3. Okay. I do not. Um, yeah, I have a flyby and strafing run, so neither one of those will will affect that. Um, then I will spend the, uh, I will spend 3 momentum to give myself 4 dice. Okay. Um, I can roll for this ship. I believe in you. Let's see what happens. I would probably call Zarya up to the bridge also. I think she was down in okay. her office. Yeah, previously I was um, looking over the communication with the Gorn like you requested me to. So yeah, after that I would probably come up just to give you the information in person anyway. Wow. Good lord. Look at that. Wow. wow. So, uh, for anybody on the podcast, I just rolled three crits. So that's eight successes you only needed four so you get five you're at five momentum and correct me if i'm wrong but i believe the salvo is every single d20 extra you get a challenge die i'll look um because this could very much matter for damage all right let's see uh salvo. Yeah, all my constellations so are, the constellations only scale four it's not huge Oops. Okay, so uh, it's only so you're going to be rolling the normal uh, torpedo damage, but add one challenge die. Okay, and um, uh, now I don't know if uh, full spread maximum yield would be a good idea. Uh, it gives me. Uh oh. I will call them back. Um. Uh, it gives me the effect of devastating attack, mm -hmm. uh, momentum spin, as if uh, two momentum had been spent. Okay. So just so... so you know, by firing a salvo, you already are doing the spread effect. And because their shields are down, any damage is going to be a breach. Okay. So then I... Yeah, I don't think I want to do devastating attack because I will probably blow the ship up at this point. Yeah, we already are hitting with high yield. It, it's likely you could give them nine breaches if you did devastating also. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, everybody, that was the episode. <laughs> Good night. Uh, okay, so uh, let me see what the... Uh, what's the challenge dice for the ship for our torpedoes? Uh, I believe for you guys, it's either a five or a six. Uh, it is a five, so you're five. Uh, rolling six. Okay. Okay, so, uh, because you were targeting engines, of course... Uh, oh, no! The Pulsar uh, does take a strike as your first couple torpedoes slam into the port nacelle. 
and it immediately starts slowing from warp, and then the next two torpedoes fly in and hit the, the starboard nacelle, and both nacelles are effectively uh, disrupted. Uh, however, I do need you to roll me uh, a system hit, please, because my understanding is spread uh, does a different system than engines. Okay, and that's... Did we want to spend any momentum to bypass the resistance? Well, remember, um, because the shields are down, it only reduces it by uh, its resistance. And any damage when shields are down is a breach. So, you know, for transparency's sake, uh, the Pulsar is a scale 4, uh, which means it had all of a, uh, a resistance of 4. And actually, no, it had a resistance of five. So you did two damage, but your spread effect also did one damage when the shields are down. So even though you did little damage, because the shields were down, you caused breaches. Okay, to structure. And that could be very important. So, uh, the... uh, oh, go ahead. I'm just saying that sounds bad. <laughs> it could be. Um, so, uh, oh. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, but if if going through as much ship combat as we've been through lately on the uh, Amalthea, mm -hmm. uh, one uh, breach to engines and one breach to structure isn't necessarily devastating. Right. It's, it's not like a breach to structure means immediately the ship blows apart. Because I thought that too and had to look it up because I was worried for worried like hell. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, ships can take quite a beating. Uh, but what matters in this case is that the Pulsar does end up dropping out of warp. Uh, do you pursue? Yeah. Okay. And then at this point, I am going to put us into initiative order and throw some dots onto your tokens. Now, normally, because you guys just went, uh, I would count that as part of the round and let the Pulsar go. However, with two breaches, uh, I'm going to say that the Pulsar is unable to act first. So technically, you guys get another shot or another action, if you will. Um, do we... Because uh, I'm not 100% sure what it does. And mm -hmm. maybe um, GM Josh or ELH. Uh, devastating attack. How massively bad is that for them? I'll let Josh it, go for this one because he's he's better at it than I am. It's basically spread all over again. Okay, for the so, most part. I, um, I'm just asking because I have the option of having that torpedo attack have the effect of devastating attack as if two momentum was spent. So it's I don't another know. system. So it's another roll you have to make. So you may not get engines or a structure. I I think it's fine to go ahead and do it. Okay, then I will go ahead and do that then. All right, roll me I another. just didn't know if it was like doubling all my effects or, or something like that to where I literally just blew it apart with one shot. So well, I have I have an idea. What if I metting it the attack roll a little bit here? What if I mm -hmm. take the first turn, do a create advantage, and then do a keep the initiative, and then do a direct over to you, Zion, and then you could go for the attack. So the way that would work is you would create the advantage, which you'd have to tell me what you're doing to create the advantage. Then you would do two momentum for a swift task for you to then do an assist or a um, another action. Yeah. Unless sorry. you wanted it to go two zines, in which case it's two momentum, but it would go to zines, not you. Yeah, I'd do the swift task. Okay. How does that sound? The reason I'm pointing, I'm pulling for this is so that I can do the plan of action. I have a talent that'll give you more momentum. Zions, when you make the attack roll, have a lot more oomph. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, so we, yeah, I think... Oh, go ahead. We ignore the cost for uh, retain the initiative as well because of my quick-to-action talent. Hey, nice. So um, then what we could do is after I direct Zions, can do keep the initiative and pass it back to Zion to do a second shot too. Yeah, and wow, we, we are like all kinds of, hey, we're just going to take all our turns at once. Flyby lets me use the swift task momentum spend mm -hmm. um, without raising the difficulty of the second task um, if I'm the pilot of the vessel or the vehicle. Which you currently are. So there's that. 
Um, anyways, yeah, I'm all for this plan. Let's just continue to just pound the crap out of this ship. I'm going to say the advantage I'm going to try to create here is I know ships like this. Been mm -hmm. a captain for a long time. Familiar with, even if this is a mirror, mirror universe ship, whatever it is, I'm familiar with how a Constellation class vessel works, especially with the damage it's gotten. So I want to anticipate what this ship is going to do and at least point out the weak spots for Zion to take a shot. Okay. Uh, let's have you roll me a... Let's see, if you want to focus more on possible tactics of the captain or possible actions that a captain of a Constellation class could do, uh, I would say that would be an insight command. Uh, if you want to focus more on the actual schematics and technical specs, uh, that would be an insight engineering. The difficulty here would be a 2. But if you succeed, yeah. I will make all attacks uh, against the vessel at a reduced one difficulty. Sweet. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go the command insight route. And I think I'm going to use my determination, actually. I'm going to do um, be brave, be bold, be Starfleet. How's that sound? Sure. Yeah, okay. Okay, I like this plan. Uh, would you say a focus in tactics would apply here? Oh, most definitely. I do see green. All right, so because you spent your value on this, uh, you get a grand total. Well, hold up. How are you getting the uh, the two other dice? I did not ignore that. I okay. should only have the first two. The first two, the second okay. Two, which so the really good you ones. get one momentum. And yeah, uh, all attacks versus the Pulsar uh, until tactics change will be at a reduced one difficulty. However, and I Zines, will... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say in Zines, I have a plan of action talent. So whenever you do your attack, if you're following my plan, you'll get an extra two momentum immediate to spend. Help me remember that. Sounds good. And Elitch, you were saying something that sounded very Yes, uh, I was going to say that I am going to spend some threat here uh, to allow the tactical officer of the Pulsar to raise shields. Because okay. it's only a minor action, and they have a certain talent that lets them do a minor action on any turn. Okay. Well, I'm going to spend uh, the one momentum I just got, and then a second momentum to take a swift task. Okay. And all of my swift task is going to do is I am going to direct Zines to bring the pain. Okay. Go get them. So what are wait, you... Uh... Um, oh, go ahead. Wait. So the Pulsar has taken impacts to its engines. Mm -hmm. I don't think it can do anything until it's they've done the restore minor action. Well, no. So technically raising and lowering shields does not require power. You're, you're mostly correct in that usually oh, okay. when... Uh, you get a breach to engines, you have to restore them for anything involving power. Um, but, you know, raising, lowering shield, it's just a minor, so, you know, they can do it. But good call. Good, good okay. check. Okay, so then it passes to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to shoot torpedoes this time. I'm going to hit them with phasers. Okay, uh, you are currently at long range, just so you know. Uh, at least I believe you are, anyway. Yeah, Zines, you'll get, units. you'll get an assist from me with the uh, direct, and I have advisor, so you'll get a d20 reroll in there, too. Okay. So I'm at... I won't be able to shoot phasers i have to shoot torpedoes well no you can shoot phasers it's just at an increased difficulty oh well then i will i'll take that increase in difficulty okay well that um, increase in difficulty is nullified by the captain's benefit that he just made uh so the difficulty here is a two okay um and again that would be a control security on your part the akagi would be a weapons security 
And I only need to see two successes here. Unless, of course, you're targeting a specific system. Uh, would you like me to target a specific system? They I do think have we shields up at this point. I think we need to disable the ship. Yeah, so take down the shields and and go for... Um, oh, maybe... Uh, hmm, that's tough. We could try to disable, or we could try to just disable their weapons and then tractor them, and then they're kind of harmless at that point. Um, yeah, I think Zines would probably go for like the phaser banks um, at this point, because... I mean, I've got him dead in the water, so... Okay. Or at least um, I think I have him dead in the water. Right, so I will say, if you are specifically targeting weapons, that will make the difficulty a 3 overall. Okay. But you're you're going to have a lot of momentum after you make this shot. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're, you're going to be rolling in the momentum. Yeah. You've got um, Akagi's assist, you've got my assist, and then you've got the 2 free momentum you're going to get um, anyway. Then I think I'm going to spend 1 momentum for 1 extra dice. Okay. Um, cause, uh, you said difficulty is three or four? Three. Okay. So that'll give me three dice plus two other people assisting. So hedging bets. Mm -hmm. I can take uh, care of the ship. Okay. And what would my assist be as, as the director? Presence command. There we go. That's uh. three for me, one from the ship and the captain's just butter at this point. Mm -hmm. And technically if you wanted to crit fish, you could reroll one of those. You do have one free roll, one reroll from me. Okay, then uh, yeah, I'll I'll reroll one of those dice. In before twenty. Yeah, I know, right? Um, actually, no, I'm not gonna worry about it. Because <laughs> I'm hey, I pushed my luck way too much in in other games. I'm not gonna do it this time. Gotcha. All right. Um, so, uh, the good news is that with four successes, you do indeed hit. Uh, you actually get one momentum from that in addition to whatever the captain provides. Yeah, that was two, so you'd have three now. Mm -hmm. And remember, okay. you have uh, phaser banks, I believe? Or is it phaser array? Yes, you have phaser banks, which banks. means you have versatile two, uh, which if Lovely. you don't remember is two bonus momentum that has to be spent on this attack. Okay, and I those think banks only. I think banks only increase the damage. Though I think arrays are the ones that give. Right, it raises more. it by one. Uh, it's array that gives area slash spread by default. Thank um, you. You're right. I forgot. We're, we have phasers. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna dump the two from versatile into um, uh, piercing, penetrating. Mm -hmm. One of the p words it means. I'm gonna get through their resistance. Okay. Um, and then, uh, I'll. Captain gave me two that I have to spend immediately, but it doesn't have to be on the roll. Oh, and you know what we could do? There, I don't see it on the chart, but I think you can also spend momentum to take power off. Yes. Which might also be very useful uh, here. That yeah, it's is, repeatable. Let's see. Because yep. I know exactly the one you're talking about. I know it's here somewhere. I think it's I one it momentum in per power. Yep, and it's repeatable. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just take all their power away. All right, so how much momentum are you spending? <laughs> Sorry. So, to... um, well, okay, so here's here's my thought process to this. I want to save one of the momentum that you give me to use a swift action, swift task immediately afterwards to do evasive maneuvers. So that way, when they get to go, if they shoot back, if I don't get rid of their weapon systems, that they have a higher difficulty. That's my thought. But, it says here Swift Task is two. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is two. Uh, but I'm also sitting on a ridiculous amount of momentum right now. You are. Okay, so that's my plan. I'll dump two in to be able to take a Swift Task um, to do evasive maneuvers, which with flyby attack, uh, I do not have an increase in difficulty for the second attack. Okay. Or the second action, I should say. Um, and I will dump... two of our pooled momentum into draining power. Okay. So, uh, this is going to be uh, eight challenge die for you, for your phasers, and let's see what happens. Okay. Okay, so, uh, you ignore four resistance, which means that you do some damage to their shields, and actually you take them below half shields, which... Uh, is another breach. So go ahead and roll me a system hit, please. 
Weapon. Nice. Well, would you look at that? Perfect. All right. So, uh, you know, you fire phasers, and, you know, it's a little bit out of the Akagi's bank range normally, but, uh, you know, you maybe add a li- little extra juice, and sure enough, uh, when it hits them, uh, it hits them hard, and they suffer a breach to their weapons. And I would say that at this point, uh, you pretty much have them disabled. Like, they're not completely disabled, but it would be very easy for you to swoop in, tractor beam them, uh, ri- you know, get rid of their shields, and then transport, you know, stuff of that nature. Okay. Um, I can do that uh, swift task to do that. In s- well, no, it's not a swift task to do that. Um... Well, it would be a swift task for you to do any helm action at this point. Okay. Then... Yeah, because I think we were still in my turn. I was going to do keep the initiative and then pass it to you, but you, one of you guys reduced that cost to zero, so I think now it's actually taking the turn of... Um, like, it's actually now your turn. Right. Okay. Then um, I'll... Honestly, I'll just fly in and tractor beam them. Okay. Well, you can't tractor and fly at the same time, but if you want to move anywhere within medium range, uh, that just happens. Like, you can just fly up, no problem. Um, then sure. Okay. So yeah, go ahead and move yourself wherever you'd like. Uh, normally, this would be a difficulty zero roll, but I think you guys are good. I, I think you, you, you've got the momentum and the, the advantage at this point. Um, um, and I that moved us uh, six or five. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so I'll move us to there, and then that's, I guess that's my turn. Yeah, and the good news is uh, you are technically within close range, and I'm going to spend enough threat to end the scene. And the way the scene will end is the pulsar shields do lower. However, uh, the shields are now focused on the bridge and engineering, so you cannot transport in or out of those locations. However, the rest of the ship is available. And we'll cut back to the bridge right as uh, our good counselor uh, arrives. Captain, I've reviewed the footage of the conversation with the Gorn that you requested me to review. Very good, Lieutenant Commander. What do you think? Um, I find no reason to believe that the captain is lying about the events that had happened, I'm not sure why necessarily a Starfleet vessel would attack a Gorn ship. But at this point, I don't think she's lying. So I think pursuing the Pulsar and seeing if they might have some sort of better explanation is worth doing. There's something going on in that ship. The person that came on screen is is not the Captain Mayock that I I'm acquainted with. And because so I, think at this I point forgot I'd like to, to throw her token on there, uh, Ensign Sarul actually does the honors without even prompting. She does put the communication on screen so that Zarya can see it. Then again, Zarya, you do see that the the Mayock on screen does have the uh, stereotypical, you know, evil goatee thing going on. Mm-hmm. And I think for you, this is going to be all of an insight con or an insight medicine. Uh, now let's make a con. Uh, insight con at a difficulty of one. Uh, because out of character, I think we've all figured out what it is. But in character, this is my way of, you know, you guys figuring it out. Hey, you get a momentum. And yeah, it's as you guys have suspected. Uh, that is more than likely a mirror universe version of the good captain. Has. Uh, is that like a widely known thing at this point? I would say that Zarya knows it and Miller knows it. Uh, the only reason Zarya knows it is because there are psychology studies and data about the subject. So, mm-hmm. Zines, you probably don't know about it. Okay. I just want to know if it was widely known that, you know, 
uh, goatees and dark hair and a darkened bridge equals, you know, the other side. I mean, you could assume, but, you know. <laughs> it seems unusual, to say the least. And they were headed towards Organia, is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay, number one, let's get a tractor beam on this ship. I don't want it going anywhere. Hi, right, Captain. Working on that now. All right. I'll just say that, uh, yeah, you tractor the vessel, and the shields maintain over the bridge and engineering. And the whole mirror universe information, is that top secret? Anything like that? Uh, as far as I was able to tell, it is not. It's sort of Captain's prerogative at this point. Um, I, Captain, I'll share that with everyone. What what this is? Okay. Uh, Zine's antenna will kind of turn to like a inquisitive, like WTF. Um. So there's Starfleet from another dimension. That's what the reports say, and I think we are looking at some of the best evidence to prove that theory. Interesting. Well, at least we know they can't fly nor shoot, so... Or, well, at least as well as me, but... Um, uh, tractor beams locked in, Captain. Uh, looks like they are preparing to repel borders at engineering and uh, the bridge. We should take that ship, but Mr. Sarul, if you could send out a transmission to Starfleet Command, encrypt the, transi the transmission, make it priority one, explaining our situation. On it, sir. And uh, she begins sending off a communique. All right, suggestions, people. What do you think is the best way we can take this ship? Preferably with as few injuries as possible. And so Riley isn't left out. Let's say that Cerule also does at least key him in so that he can listen from engineering. I mean, I can continue to pound them with phasers until they have no power left. I think that wouldn't be a bad idea. Part of me also wonders if there is still some sort of diplomatic situation we could take here. There's so much we don't know still about the mirror universe or the situation. They did fire first. I think if we can remove their capability to fight back from their ship, I'd still like to give them a chance. Hopefully they could see the light of reason that they have no chance of escaping at this point. I have a question. Where is the crew of our pulsar that's exactly what i was thinking i mean is it something that there can <laughs> i can't believe i'm saying this there can be only one so uh, our pulsar is now in their dimension and because their pulsar is here is that how I this don't... works I don't know. I've never experienced this kind of thing in my career in Starfleet. Oh. Um, can we scan the pulsar to see if it if it is our pulsar? You can indeed. Uh, let's see who would actually do that. Uh, I think Zarya, you've got the highest science here. I think. I believe I do. Awesome. I need you to roll me a reason science. And normally this would be a difficulty one, but the Akagi has advanced sensor suites, so the difficulty is a zero. And the Akagi will also assist you with a uh, sensors and science. I, I can do that roll. All right. Ooh. 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 Okay, so you could give me two momentum to get rid of that complication. However, because you didn't roll a success, you do not get the assist from the Akagi, but it is a difficulty zero, so you do technically still succeed. Give them the momentum, I think. Yeah, we have plenty of momentum. Okay. Alrighty, so, uh, Zarya, you, uh, you scan the, uh, the pulsar, and something you notice immediately is that 
there's approximately uh, 20 more warm bodies on board than there should be, and that there is an abnormal concentration of people in engineering and in areas such as the cargo bays and shuttle bays. I would say engineering would make sense because they're like blocking off engineering from people boarding, so maybe they might have their people go in there. But I'll definitely relay to the others that there's an unusual amount of people in the cargo bays as well as engineering. Does the crew count match the complement that the pulsar should have? No, it looks like there's an additional 20 people there. Does the hull say USS Pulsar? Yes, yes it does. Okay. Okay. I mean, you you did kind of blow a hole in part of it, so it's it's just kind of an SS Pulsar at the moment, but yeah. Um, and I when, didn't know we were that specific with our hit. <laughs> when when the uh when the like our you know view screen camera goes over it and it's missing the part in front of the SS, Zines just kind of like sheepishly shrugs and goes and says, "Sorry, that's where the phaser banks were." No, no, it was a good shot, number one. Let's try, let's try the diplomatic so- solution first one last time. I don't have high hopes, but for the sake of peace, let's at least give them a chance to surrender. Uh, I, Captain, opening hailing frequency. Captain Mayok, from what we call the Mirror Universe, I'm giving you this one last chance. You've seen the superiority of this vessel against yours. Also, reinforcements are on the way. In a protracted conflict, we will certainly take your vessel. Many will be injured on on your side that don't necessarily need to be. I give you a chance now to surrender, and we can talk through whatever's going on. You can tell me your side, and I know that we can come to some sort of reasonable agreement. So there is a pause, and it's probably starting to get to the point where you're like, yeah, he's not going to say anything. But you do get an audio-only reply, and it is almost a hiss, and it says, You can certainly try. And while that was going on, I'll kind of look designs and maybe silently say this, but can we tell this transmission where it was coming from? Was it coming from their bridge? It was. And that's one of the locations they were protecting, so mm-hmm. it makes sense for it to come from the bridge. Well, looks like the next step is probably to board this ship and see what we can take. Um, probably need to make our way to the auxiliary bridge first. I'm assuming a Constellation class ship has an auxiliary bridge. Uh, from my research, it does. Uh, however, it is part of the shielded area. So you would need to beam at least somewhere close. You couldn't, like, beam directly in kind of a thing. You did say there was a higher concentration of people in the shuttle bay. Mm -hmm. If there are hostages, that would be a place to put them if you wanted to have the option of spacing them if they didn't comply. So that might be a good place to take first. Um, is, Is it explained that the Mirror Universe version of Starfleet is the xenophobic style? They're mostly humans. Is that widely known, or is that a disco-like retcon? That is entirely up to Zarya how she wants to flavor it. Uh, I think they are probably the xenophobic type. So, okay. So... Is there no uh, shield around the people in the cargo bays? Nope, no shield there. No shield around the cargo bays. Why don't we grab some? Yeah, yeah, great call. Let's just beam them out. Bring them over? We should send security that way. I think we toss them in the brig and let's sort it out when they're all on board. Okay. Can can I do a quick scan of the life signs on that ship to see, uh, like, species? You can indeed. Concentration of species and where they are. 
Uh, you certainly can. Uh, this will be a higher difficulty, though. Uh, and I'm also going to spend uh, a few threat to make it even more difficult. So after accounting for the threat spend and after accounting for your advanced sensor suites, the difficulty will be a 4. And uh, the complication range will be a 19 to 20 uh, for reasons that will become apparent. Uh, you are going to be rolling me a reason medicine, uh, and the ship will be assisting you with a sensors medicine. Oh, Lord. Uh, yeah, this isn't going to work. I can, uh, I can do the ship. Uh, Remember, you do have Zarya right there. I believe her medicine score is actually quite yeah. nice. Sure. <laughs> that I would be it? better. I'm I'm in a, a reason nine medicine too, so absolutely. I think you might want this. Do we want to use any of our momentum? I think so. I think it'd be good to know what we're dealing with here. Yeah, I think at least one momentum. Okay. Okay, we'll do one. That way, we have something in the bank for backup. Okay. Um. Let me just double check what my focuses are. Sure. Xenobiology. Would apply. Nice. All right. So that is uh, one success from the Akagi, three successes from Zarya. You are indeed able to find out that there are a large number of humans aboard. Uh, there's several Vulcans, including one on the bridge uh, and one in one of the cargo bays. The rest of the crew is either Andorian, human, or Denobulan. Seems that there's very few Vulcans on this ship. Only two. Hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, is the Vulcan who's not on the bridge female? No. Well, I would say you wouldn't be able to tell that from this. Well, I would say if you give me a momentum, I will answer that question. No. Oh. Uh, All right. Go the, for it. The okay. answer is that no, they are male. Okay. Captain, looking at this tactically, and think, well, I shouldn't say tactically, but looking at this, there's only two Vulcans on the entire ship. One of them's the captain on the bridge. So, what says that the only other Vulcan on this ship is probably tied to the captain in some way, shape, or form? Why it's else very likely it two? could be the normal universe version of Maylock, or our version of Maylock. It may not be a uh, accomplice. So if we go with your idea of bringing some of the people over into the brig, how about we make sure we get that Vulcan? I like it. That's a great idea. I think it's, um, a, it's a risk to only transport a small number because what if they notice and they decide to just space everybody? I think if we're going to grab everybody, we got to get them all out of that cargo bay. And he's thinking along the right lines because at maximum you can only transport six people at a time. That was going to be my next question. Well, I take that back. There is an emergency transporter which technically could accommodate up to 28, but it's kind of one of those things where it overtaxes the computers and just isn't really recommended. It's literally just for emergency situations. Mm hmm. So, it's a little bit of an emergency. It's not an everyday situation. Um, oh. Zine's a look at his console. How are we doing power wise? Uh, as far as I'm aware, you're only at 14, or you're only minus one power, so you're almost full at the moment. Um, I mean, I think uh, Commander Zarya is on an idea. If we use the emergency transporter, I don't think it will hamp our combat effectiveness too terribly much? Let's give that a shot. I had another idea too. What if we tried to uh, break into the, sh to the Pulsar's main computer and out of character? I don't know. Did Kirk only have prefix codes because he's an admiral or is that something that we could have access to also? I believe that's probably an admiral thing. I'm pretty sure it was Spock who 
pulled them up out of the Enterprise computers. They were just in the computers. Right. There has to be something for them to verify against. Huh. That seems like a sort of thing you just wouldn't have in a database anywhere, but I wanted to give right. it a shot. I mean, it is kind of, it uh, is kind I mean, of very easy in, uh, <laughs> in Rathacon. I mean, if, if, if we were facing off against a mirror version of the Akage, I could see us, you know, maybe possibly making a role to change ours to be able to get control of it. Mm -hmm. But seeing as how we're not the Pulsar. Yeah, I would say you definitely don't have like command code level access to the Pulsar. Um, my my next step where I was going with that is if we could get access to their computer, just not letting them turn like giving taking away their access to environmental systems and, and computer control, so they couldn't space people. We could always to beam, give us more time. We could always beam a team into the area near the cargo bay, make sure we have control there, and use the override to make sure that they can't open those doors. Then we could just leisurely get as many people as we want safely. Uh, what if it's a smaller group of we're assuming we have a smaller group to deal with if we pull the people out of the shuttle bay we could also at the same time send a team over to put pressure on engineering in the bridge where I'm assuming is more important to them since they have it shielded then they may be less inclined to start executing people when they have their own necks to worry about so to yeah. maybe put a, uh, a number, uh, the crew, not including the Mirrorverse, is 350. With Mirrorverse, it's 370. And how many... And most of those are in the cargo bay, or only the 20 extra are in the cargo bay? No, no, no. So the quote-unquote... Well, that's the thing. You don't really know which life signs are quote-unquote mirror... Um, but pretty much every single cargo bay, every single shuttle bay, basically any room they could throw hostages in, that's where a bulk of the life signs are. That's, that's kind of where I was going with my question. So, okay, uh, I think, um, Captain, that idea is a good idea. If we grab that one, wait a minute. They might not notice one person going missing, but I don't know if we will necessarily be able to get everybody from all of those locations all at once so um, that they wouldn't be able to open the doors. I I want to do one more computer check on the Pulsar that we know of. Mm -hmm. Can I check the duty? The, uh, duty. The um, uh, crew assignments. How many Vulcans are on our Pulsar? Uh, should just be the one, the captain. Awesome. Zines will spin around in the chair. Uh, yeah. How about we grab that one other Vulcan? I'm willing to bet that last bo- Well, okay, a bottle of Andorian Ale, that that other Vulcan is our Captain Mayok. If we grab him, bring him here, I can lead a security team over- and maybe he can help you with your computer core idea. I like that. And it just occurred to me, if we start pulling too many people of that crew over to our ship, we have no really good way of knowing who's from the Mirror Universe. We don't want to compound the problem of the Pulsar on the Kagi. If they're all on that ship, they're all on that ship. Which is one why I'm... Yeah, one Vulcan we can manage. Which is why I'm thinking that if the Vulcan who's on the bridge, it makes sense that it's the Mayok that, well, gave you the bird... And the only other Vulcan, which is the only other Vulcan that should be on the Pulsar, is not on the bridge. To me, it seems like that's probably your friend Mayok. I follow you, number one. I think that's a great idea. We might have to get the security team applying pressure on engineering and the bridge at the same time we pull up the Mayok, or at least who we're hoping is a Mayok, because um, we have no idea what their intentions are, but... Like I said, my theory is once once we start bringing the pain to them, they're gonna start they're gonna forget about the hostages. All right. So if I understand your plan correctly, uh, you want to beam up the Vulcan that is in one of the cargo bays. Where are you beaming them to? Let's be safe and still put them in the brig. Okay. 
Uh, or actually, for, for ease of sake, because it's just one guy, let's beam him to the transporter with the security team there, and then we'll take this one guy to the brick. Okay. Uh, would any of you be going down to meet him? Like, would you be the ones actually doing the transport task, or would you just have them sort of brought to you sort of as a second thought kind of a thing? I would probably grab Riley and say, Riley, I'd like you to beam him up, and I would probably say to Zines, I think you're right. Why don't you take that security team over? And gosh, I don't know where to start applying pressure, the bridge or engineering. I'll leave that up to you, number one. Okay. So let's do a uh, theater of the mind thing here. All right. So uh, Mr. Miller and Mr. Riley, you're going to the transporter room to meet your incoming guest. Uh, Zines, you are the head of the security team. Uh, Who is coming with you on the security team? Um, Unless you want to take Zarya, I was going to say Zarya could stay in command on the bridge. I'm completely... If that security team is is going to be putting pressure on engineering, I'd like to be part of it. Okay, well, what we can say happens is that after you beam the uh, hopeful captain over, you can then go with Zines. Yeah, Perfect. I I was just going to suggest that. Um... Uh... Let's say, who else do we, which of the, um... Varan is, is, all he is, is this, is, uh, combat. Okay, then I'll take, uh, Varan. Okay. Because I, I want a soothing Russian accent. Alright. Um... We always need that. I mean, it's always a good thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I, I don't think we have any other, um... Could, uh, could I volunteer to Lynn as a medic? You sure. certainly could. Uh, that would let uh, everybody have a character, though it does mean that uh, Nick has to do a Russian accent. <laughs> I can't do that. Uh, I can speak a small amount of Russian, but I can't do a Russian accent. Nick, yeah. you can take to Lynn, and I'll try, Ron. Sure, we can do it that way. I'll butcher it. <laughs> um, and then... Um, I kind of would like maybe just a team of red shirts. Uh, obviously, this is as uh, this is um, TOS, so like mm-hmm. we're all red shirts. But just a regular security team to maybe put pressure on the bridge while we go to engineering. Okay. If nothing else, just to like shoot phasers at the shields. Okay. Or keep us apprised of what the bridge is doing. Okay. Yeah, that can happen. All right, so uh, everybody. Oh, that's the other thing that I ask. Uh, are you spending? Well, you don't have any momentum, so you could give me threat. Are you taking any special equipment? Um, that's a very good question. I am. I would like to take my uh, my Ushantor. Mm-hmm. I don't believe it counts as an increase. Because uh, I have if you talent. have personal effects, then yeah, it does not count. I have the talent for the Ushan. Oh. Uh, then yes, I think it's the same thing. It does not count because it just comes with your character. Okay. Um, I. Th- other than if Riley wants to take like an engineering kit, but I think he can do that as the yeah, chief, as chief engineer. Yeah, as chief engineer, he can just do that. Um, and I will. I will, definitely. <laughs> Along with my phaser. Okay. And body, body armor would be nice, but I'm afraid the cost might be too high. It's one opportunity and one escalation. Which would be two I, threat in this case, because you don't have any momentum. Riley has experience as a security officer in the past, and he he just likes the freedom of movement, you know, of not having it. Um, And what is it one for like a medical kit, just in case? Uh, I would say that Talyn, as a medical character, could take one of her own volition. Okay, then I I think we're set, unless Vran has some weird um, reptilian weapon that he wants to bring with him. Yes, it's uh, pronounced phaser. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I, no, I don't think there is. It. I think we're, we're but, covered then. Okay. All right, so everybody gets kitted out. You head to the transporter room. 
And uh, we're going to have uh, Riley, since you're there, uh, you're going to be doing the transporter task. So this is going to be a control engineering, and the ship will assist you with sensors engineering. Uh, the difficulty here will be, so it's base two, the target's not on a transporter pad, so plus one. You have advanced sensors, so minus one. So the difficulty here is only a two. All right, before before we do this at ELH, I should have mm -hmm. I should have brought this up before. Can I create an advantage that reflects this plan that we're doing? Mm, it would depend on what you're trying to get out of it. So the plan that I'm doing is just like the plan I'm dictating is the plan that we're going to undertake, and that is bringing Malak aboard. And while we're doing that, the two teams are going to attack engineering and the bridge to put pressure on them so that we can, you know, start to uh, make them forget about the hostages. Mm-hmm. Okay. And in the meantime, I'm going to get as many answers as I can out of Maylock, who I'm assuming is Maylock. If not, then we'll just regroup. Okay. Can I actually send Zarya with uh, Miller to go talk to Maylock? You certainly could. I think that'll be a good thing yeah, for her to do. Great. Okay. Just give me, uh, while I'm getting tokens set up, uh, I will say that uh, there will be an advantage, but it will be for a role that will come later. Cool. Um, I've got the ship up. What was the role for the ship? The ship is a sensors engineering. ELH, I'm also trying to exploit that talent plan of action to get the bonus two momentum for anything using that plan. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, then I will uh, keep track of that. Is it for any role involving the plan or the first role involving the plan? Because it does make a difference. It's for any role that uses the plan. It has to be uh, related to the plan or conflict. Okay. Uh, we'll say for now, you know, it'll it'll apply the two momentum, but you still have to succeed for it to work. Okay. Cool. I like it. Uh, so let's see. So that is a total of three successes. So you do get a momentum. And yeah, uh, as, uh, you know, the, uh, the Vulcan is beamed aboard, uh, you do see that it is the expected uh, Captain Miok. Uh, interestingly, uh, he has a white hair uh, kind of thing going on, and uh, almost the complete opposite of the Miok you saw on the bridge. And as soon as he materializes, he looks around, uh, almost frantic, and he looks to you, Captain, and he says, You fool! They, they were expecting this! Uh, you have to get them out now. They're spacing everyone. Uh, Is there something that Miller would know that Mayok would know, like a time, like a keyword or a special situation that we might have shared together that I could use to test this guy's? Like, hey, you remember the time I pushed you off the canoe or something? And he'd say, yes, I remember that time. It's if you forward. give me the momentum you just got, yes. Sure. All right. <laughs> I, I want to confirm that this guy is who he says he is. Okay. So, you know, you, you say the, the code phrase or whatever to check his memories. Like, yeah, yes, I broke my arm twice, and then you hit on my sister. But now is not the time, Captain. They were deliberately expecting you to beam me out. Captain, can you tell us where the hostages are being held or what's the most critical areas we should start evacuating? I have teams going over to put pressure on the bridge and engineering to try to distract them. Uh, cargo bays, med bay, anywhere that was an engineering and bridge. They had us under uh, strict observation. Uh, myself, I was literally surrounded by men. All right, very good. And I've kind of motion designs to do his thing. All right. Yep. Got it, Captain. On our way. All right, um, so the maybe... way this is going to work um, is instead of doing a big old extended task, I'm basically going to start tracking time now. So time is going to be a factor, just so you guys know. Um, just in case for all these people being spaced, mm -hmm. um, maybe start transporting them over yeah i've uh, or I, i've even... already i've already uh hit the hit the uh, communication button on the console and i've already uh 
Chief Weak Ass. I need you to report. Yes, I know. I know I'm mispronouncing it. That's we're in a we're in we're in a situation. I need you to go to the emergency transporter right now. Um oh and Zines ever being the flight controller, uh, Captain, you may also want to deploy the executive shuttles to also start transporting anybody who gets spaced. But we'll go as fast as we can to get into engineering and take control of everything. Very good, Commander. Let me know how it's going. We'll handle it on our side. And then as soon as Riley's done giving orders to uh, we, Cass, um, we'll transport over near engineering and start the assault. Mm-hmm. Alrighty. So I am going to put us on this map, and I'll show you hopefully what's going on. But after I explain that, we'll take our 5 to 10 minute break. Uh, so you guys should be over here to the right. Uh, you should be able to uh, move around, see the walls, etc, etc. Uh, but this will be a dynamically lit encounter. So I think it'll be uh, very good fun. And uh, before we go to break, I will say, so you guys materialize, uh, you see that the warning flashing lights of Red Alert are flashing. Uh, some of the conduits along the wall have blown out, so there is sort of debris in the middle of the carpet. Uh, you're also noticing that there are some bodies of injured crewmen uh, strewn about, I would say about three or four, and you're not sure if they are, uh, you know, related to Mirrorverse or if they are, um, shall we say, uh, Prime Universe. And yeah, uh, this is where we will take our five to ten minute break. So BRB very quickly.
All right, and we're back from our break. So, uh, you guys are not technically uh, in combat at the moment, so you are somewhat free to move around. I would just say be uh, be very slow in your movements so that uh, you don't, like, rush ahead of everybody else. Because once combat starts, wherever you are will be where you are. I guess as the security officer... Fran will push ahead. Okay. Excuse uh, me, Commander. I have my phaser. <laughs> Take uh, the momentum. Why not? Uh, and Zines will... Uh, he'll also kind of uh, move in tandem with Fran. Okay. So you guys round the corner, and you see more of the same. Uh, you see that there are more panels blown out, uh, more injured bodies. These look... Probably the normal crewmen uh, that were maybe injured when the Mirrorverse first came aboard. Uh, that or they were just very unlucky. Uh, and, you know, Zines' breaches may have caused some of this problem. I regret nothing. Is there, <laughs> is there a panel near where I am uh, uh, that is not... That is still active? There is. Uh, and what is it you want to specifically try to do with the panel? Well, I was thinking I could, I have two ideas. Mm -hmm. One, I could try to temporarily d uh, remove power from the section, which would probably prevent the doors from opening. Mm -hmm. Or I could try to trick the computer into thinking there is a hull breach, which would, pro which would probably also prevent the doors from opening. I would say both have their merits, but I'm not going to give you a hint as to which is the quote-unquote better choice here. So I need to know which one you're picking. I, uh, Commander, I I say that to Commander Signs. Uh, what do you think? So both plans would result in the doors being opened or being closed? It would prevent them from opening them. Potentially. Well, we're we're going into engineering, right? Mm-hmm. So we we want the doors open so we can get in. I think he means for like the cargo bays and the shuttle oh. bays and the, the yes. yes, absolutely. Uh I either one would, would work. Um I guess if I could sh if we're going towards the engineering and I shut down power in this section, it might it might remove any force fields from our path but that would probably be more difficult it would be extremely difficult i would say at this point whatever the nearest cargo bay is if you can lock it out to where they can't or all of them for that matter um but at least one of them to help out the akagi from happening to get all of those people i think that would help be a major help so i would like to uh trick the computer into thinking that there is a hull breach, which would prevent the doors from opening. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a daring engineering. It will be a difficulty 5. What? And the complication range will be a 17 to 20. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Might be determination time. Yeah. Uh, well, I think it's better to beg for forgiveness than ask for permission. So I'm just going to do this. Okay. And, and that's my value. So I'm going to burn my determination. Okay. So that's two successes already. And then it's a, uh, what did you say it was? Control engineering? Daring engineering. Okay. Okay. I don't have a focus. I don't think reverse engineering works for this. Mm, technically, it kind of does. Eh, I'll let you have I'm, it. I'll let you have it. Oh, you're you're special. You're great. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm gonna have to use that momentum as well. Okay. Uh, just just as a reminder, uh, the determination does count as a bot die. So in order to get a second die, it will cost oh. the momentum and a threat. Yes, we have to do it. Okay. I, I think it's worth it. 
All right, so you're now rolling three die. Uh, if you want to roll the fourth die, you have to give me three threat. That's a lot of threat. It is. I think you go for it. We got to win on this one. This will be All huge. Right. All right, let's do it. Okay. There's so, a lot of dice to roll, too. Yep, so you're rolling four die. One dice is already considered having rolled a one, so let's see what happens. Okay, that's very nice. So that is six successes, uh, but I believe that is a complication. Nope, it's a 15. Nope. All right, so uh, you do get one momentum. And yeah, sure enough, uh, with your mastery of reverse engineering and uh, engineering know-how, you bypass some of the safety features and uh, more or less re-enable them. Uh, preventing the Mirror Universe people from spacing uh, the uh, Pulsar's crew. Quite impressive, Commander. Yeah, you, you just... The, doors. You, the, the console in front of Riley, like, you see the what, he attempt, what he's attempting to do with success, success, and then the last one, it's almost like a loading bar, and it just sits on that last note for way too long. And then, boom, success. And Riley just lets out a, long, a big sigh. And right as you sigh, a mirror crewman steps around the corner and opens fire. And okay. they will hit you. Uh, well, they won't hit you, per se. Uh, I'm just going to roll a d4 here. Actually, hold on. Hold on. I'm going to be a little bit evil. I'm going to say he's going to use the charge effect of his phaser to do an area attack. So all of you just took four damage. <laughs> and yeah, we are now in combat proper. Well, that's not very nice. You said four, eh? Four stress damage, yes. So, good. Yeah, Five not enough for an injury, an injury, but it is, uh, it is important to track. So it's almost like he hit the middle of uh, the area and just sparks flew up around us. Pretty much, yeah. All right, so uh, I will say it is the player's turn, so whichever one of you wants to go first. Who am I missing? Oh, I'm missing Talin. There we go. Um, either you or me, Vren. Oh, Commander, I could use my phaser on him. <laughs> Sounds like please, a plan. Please tell me I can shoot him. Of course. Uh, you is can he shoot around him, cover? you just can't eat him. Yes, he's technically, he does have a challenge die worth of cover because he's kind of around the corner. Um, but, you know, that's it's just a challenge die worth of cover. Could I maybe, like, step around here and get around his cover? Yes. Uh, I will say, uh, and I did check distances here, uh, you can move up to 25 feet in your normal move action. So about 25, so right about there, and you would get rid of his his cover die. Cool. Yeah, I want to move in close, not in reach, so I don't get that difficulty increase. So maybe, like, right here? Yeah, that'll work. Cool. Yeah, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna phaser him. All right, control security, please. Difficulty two. And uh, I believe Rand has a focus in hand phasers. Ooh, all right. Ooh. So you did succeed. But that's also a complication. Um, so go ahead and roll your damage. But I know what the complication will be. I am sorry, Commander. I shoot him too good. <laughs> oh, ooh, I did it wrong. Oh. It's actually wanting me to roll a dice, so just ignore the d20s that are going to come out of. Do we want to? Do we want to spend a momentum to ignore this? Well, you would have. We to can still keep. A, you would have to give me a momentum and a threat, and I'm going to say that ooh. even if offered, no, I want a complication. I think it's okay. LH, what did we say about being evil? Uh, that I should do it as much as possible. All right, so True. good news. Uh, the mirror crewman does go down. He's only stunned, unless you wanted to lethally injure him. Bad yeah, news. Uh, Vron, B 
because you were part of that area attack, and uh, you more or less just, uh, shall we say, fired a rather powerful burst, um, your phaser is now starting to overload. Sorry, Commander, I shoot him too good, and now my face was going to explode. I don't know what to do with it. Uh, quick, throw it. <laughs> quick, throw it like a, like a grenade. Throw it down the hallway. So we have quick to action, so we can keep the momentum. We I don't know if there's any the, more mirror crewmen. Yes. Um, so if, oh, he's, if he's mirror crewman six, there's at least five more, right? <laughs> Maybe I numbered At them least. differently. Who knows? I, I I mean, we have done ship combat where we ran into A, B, C, F, G, H, and never found out what happened to to D or E. I do it on purpose. I know. Uh, uh, could I go up to Vran and try to repair the phaser? I will allow it. However, you will have to give me uh, momentum to give you an extra minor action. Let's do it. Unless, do we think we could just easily find... No, it's... Our phasers are better than the Pulsar's phasers, clearly. They're our phasers. We have to do this. <laughs> Alright, so go ahead and move yourself up to Vran, and then I need you to roll me a control engineering at a difficulty of two. And if you have anything right, related I, to uh, repair work or to hand phasers, those would apply. I do. You said uh, control engineering? Correct. And yes, I have a focus in uh, hand phasers. Alrighty. Engineering. Yes. Ron, you just forgot to... Look, you, you hit the wrong button. Here you go, buddy. Thank you, Commander. I was I was too excited. It's understandable. All right. So that's your turn. Uh, there's no enemies yet, so Zines and Talin, you guys can uh, take your turns. Did you say any of the crewmen that were on the floor around here looked like the original crewmen? Not necessarily uh, the mirror yes. universe one? There okay. are three or four, uh, let's say three, uh, injured mm -hmm. crewmen that appear to be wearing standard uniforms for the Pulsar. Uh, they do appear to be breathing, but if you wanted to know more about their medical condition, you would actually have to stop and scan them. Are any uh, of them armed? Uh, no, it does not look like any of them are armed. I was going to have Talyn... Um, check them out just to make sure that they are okay, so that we're not like leaving anybody who's unstable behind before we go and handle the five question mark other near universe creamin that are around. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to examine at least one of them. Okay. More thoroughly. So let's say, uh, let's say you'll move. Where where would you move? So maybe there. That was actually exactly where I was going to put her. Excellent. All right. Uh, roll me a reason medicine, please. A difficulty of one. Uh, if you have anything related to triage, diagnostics, emergency medicine, all of those emergency would apply. medicine, all of them would apply. Very nice. You get a momentum. Uh, good news is that uh, all of the people here will live. Uh, bad news is that. Uh, you are detecting a large number of life forms in engineering. But we already knew that, so. Mm hmm. So, you know, okay. good. It's good news, bad news. All right, and technically, uh, it is uh, your guys' turn again. So, it can be any of you can act now. I just Unless need to know which one is moving where. So, a list of objections, Vran would probably just. Poke his head around the corner, staying in cover. Like, this way? That sound good? That sounds good. Sure. 
All right. And, and as I'll... you peek around that corner, Mirror Crewman 7 opens fire. Luckily for you, he misses completely. He's not very good at his shots. But it uh, it is your go, Vran. You have used your miner to move. You could engage him in melee. Uh, you could shoot him. Whichever you'd prefer. Is this considered what? another round? Yes, this is a whole fresh round. Awesome. I am not in reach with him, right? I'm still in just close range. I would say that you could engage him in melee if you so chose. But you're not taking a penalty if you shoot him with a phaser. I think I will shoot him. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, that's going to be a uh, control security difficulty too. <laughs> I am sorry, Commander. I, I don't know how to use my wow. phaser today. This is a thing. I love it. All right, uh, go ahead and roll the uh, the damage on that. Oh, you know, I did it. I did it wrong again. So ignore all the d20s that come out of here. All right. All right, you're only doing three damage at the moment. Uh, you do need five in order to put him down. I could spend our momentum and then a threat to add damage to take him down. Or, or you could reroll those zeros by spending one. Yeah. That's true. That's probably better. Yeah, I think I should do that. Okay. All right, make it so. That's four challenge die. Yep, he's down. But yeah, uh, as you phase him, once again, your phaser starts emitting that high-pitched hum that indicates uh, you're overloading again. I just kind of uh, shrug and, and hold it towards Riley. Um, and I'm going to walk past him and kind of cut the pie a little bit to go maybe here. Okay. To where I can see into this this room and now see a second hallway over here. Mm -hmm. So engineering is uh, this door here. Okay. Uh, but let's uh, let's resolve that. So Zines, you move up. That's your turn. Uh, Riley, I'm assuming you're going to move up and do the same thing. Uh, you know, fixing Vran's phaser. So I need you to roll me another control engineering, please. Difficulty two. All right, hey, you get a momentum. And yeah, you, you stop the overload again. Also, Riley, you are muted if you were saying anything. I'm going to take that phaser for myself. I'm going to give him mine in case maybe, maybe there's some actual issue with this phaser. Okay. So you swap phasers, no problem. And yeah, uh, at this point, I'm going to spend uh, a few threat because as you guys start to advance down that hallway, uh, you turn around and you hear the turbo lift doors open behind you. And uh, as you start to react to that, a mirror crewman comes rushing from the turbo lift and opens fire. And I am going to say that uh, I am spending some extra threat so they can minor action charge. And you can probably guess what the charge is. But the good news for you guys is that's two 20s. So to paint the picture, you know, Mirror, oh, Mirror Universe Crewman, he, he runs around the corner. He goes, aha! He pushes the button. Nothing happens. He looks down at his phaser. And then he evaporates. He's no more. He just detonates with his phaser. He's just gone. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Mander Riley, I thought that these mirror universe would be a little more impressive. I, uh, I don't think their phasers are on the same setting as, as ours. I mean, considering how nobody's phasers seem to be functioning correctly today, ours and theirs. This is true, Lieutenant. It's a bad day for the phasers. <laughs> Oh, we, we gained a momentum, right, from the last thing? Yes, you do have a momentum. 
And yeah, it's your guys' turn again since Kruman 9 killed himself. <laughs> um, I'll uh, continue to cut the pie and go out wide, but using like this bulkhead as a... Yeah, I got you. I just got to see who you can see. All right, so you can see Mirror Kruman 1, 5, and 2. Oh. Mm. Well, I don't know if you kind of can... can't see this one. Like, you see his shoulder... Yeah. But yeah, I can't really see him see... because of that wall. Yeah, you, you can, can definitely see his see shadow. These. Like, you can see okay. these two. So I will say your minor is to move up, and yes, you could take a firing action. However, I will point out that this here in the middle is the warp core. And if you roll any complications, you're hitting the warp core. Cool. So if I, if I shoot Crewman 5 down here... Mm-hmm. I, oops, where's the tool for the line? Oh, I have an idea. Yeah, I should be able to avoid hitting the warp core shooting crewman five. Just don't roll complications. And yeah. Why do you have to say stuff like that? Because I'm evil, clearly. All right, so go ahead. Uh, that's going to be a control security for you. And I'll go ahead and uh, get these guys added to initiative order while you do that. This is just a, a roll 20 question. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it normal that I can't see what, what he's seeing? Uh, that... One second. I might have dynamic lighting not on properly. Let me I, think you, I think you've got it right, ELH. The thing is our, yeah. our tokens yeah. aren't in the right spot. I it's think it's right all now. the tokens that you have um, like permission over. You can see what they see. But once okay. that you don't, you don't. So I don't have... That's fair. Yeah, it's, You, you can't see from Zymes, but you can see from Vran. I can see from Vran. Vran. Yeah, so yeah. Vran is set up as a supporting he character, so everybody can see from Vran, but yeah, otherwise you can only see from your character. All right. And that's... Um, unfortunately, that's the only way to do it in Roll20. Anyone you can move, you can no, see. No, that's fair. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's good, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to spend momentum. I'm just going to take a shot normally. Okay. Uh, no complications. No That's complication, the good but you do miss, unfortunately. And uh, Mirror Crewman 5 is just going to fire right back at you. Sweet. Can we, can we keep news, the momentum? Uh, well, you would have to give me a momentum and a threat. It's... I guess uh, the quick to action doesn't apply? No, it only counts for the first round of combat. So this... Okay, fair enough. Uh, but no, uh, I'm going to say that since I've already rolled it, uh, the mirror crewman fires at you, Zines, and you're going to take a whopping two stress damage. Um, would I get that negative because I have cover? Uh, yes, roll me a challenge die worth of cover. Okay, so you only take one stress damage. One is better than two. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, and it's back to you guys. Uh, Vran, Riley, or Talyn can act. So uh, I'd like to say that uh, I guess I don't want to go yet, so I don't say anything. Never mind. Okay. I'm thinking Vran is probably seeing that uh, Zions is taking fire is, is probably going to go um, a little bit on the rampage and try mm -hmm. to get in this room and get some attention. Okay. I think we're going to move around uh, probably right probably right here. Okay. I'm going to have Talyn following up, but not necessarily going into the main fray. Gotcha. And I'm, I'm going to use my phaser on crewman one. Okay. Don't roll complications. Yeah, Riley shouts, shouts out, Don't shoot the warp core! Hey, you know what? Actually, we've used... Um, we've used Fred before. I'd like to give him a value so I can use a determination. Sure. No, that was the same... I think that was the same... Uh, it's been the same thing. Yeah, I guess technically this is the same mission. Yeah, it's the same mission. Oh. Yeah... Yeah, Afterwards, though, yeah, after this mission, you can give him something. Definitely. We will treasure Vran after this mission.
I do see a green. Oh, very nice. You get a momentum. Come and on, you really to, to put crewman one down. Very nice. That's that's all it took was just swapping out phasers, and now you're shooting just fine. Now so I guys, won't shoot. Could, could I perhaps uh, keep that momentum that I've just got to um, perhaps keep the initiative to fire again? I would say that would be a swift task, and your difficulty yes. would increase to a difficulty three. I want keep the initiative to be swift task today. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I would talk about that. It okay. would be just as effective if I walked into the room and fired, I think. Okay, sure. So you're keeping the two momentum is what I'm hearing? Yeah, we're going to we're going to let Riley do his thing. All right. Well, before Riley can go, it is going to be the enemy's turn and Mirror Crewman 2 is going to kind of step up to this corner here. Oh, hold on. Sorry, I'm doing flyovers. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I love the sneaky ones. The sneaky ones are great, because then all of a sudden they go... It's, it's great. Uh, anyway, so uh, Mirror Crewman 2 uh, jets forward and uh, is going to open fire uh, right about here. So I am going to spend some more threats so that it is another area attack. But let's see what he rolls. Well, bad news, he succeeded. Good news, you know, to Lynn, Zines, Fran... You only take two damage before, uh, I would say, Vran, you can roll a challenge dice, and Talyn, you can roll a challenge dice for resistance. Okay, so Talyn's only going to take one. Uh, unfortunately, Vran will be taking two. Um, I have a question, because mm -hmm. it's never come up like this before that I can remember. Mm-hmm. The five stress damage is only in one attack that I would take. Uh, I would be grievously wounded, or is it five total? Uh, no, it is five in one attack. Okay, good, because I'm sitting at seven. Mm -hmm. All right, but uh, with another phaser fire out of engineering, it is back to either Talyn or Riley. All right, I'd like to attempt to shoot something. Mm -hmm. All they're doing is messing with computers. So I'm going to come around that corner. All right. And I'm going to uh, open fire on crewman number two. All right. It's going to be a uh, control security difficulty two, and he will get a challenge die worth of cover if you do impact him. That is fine. Uh, control security. I also have my uh, hand phasers, focus, focus and hand phasers. Mm -hmm. Very nice. You hit him. Go on ahead and roll me some damage. How do I do this? Uh, so what is your security? It's a four. Uh, phaser type two is three, I believe. So seven. Yeah, my total five. is seven. Do I, is that on the sheet as well? Uh, if you put it under weapons, uh, usually though, we just use the challenge die macro. Uh, but, you know, whichever way is convenient for you. Oh, it does D20 if you do it through the sheet. Right. So yeah, how do I, how do, I do this in roll 20? Uh, there should be the challenge die macro, uh, which, if you don't remember, uh, it's under the collection tab. Uh, you should be able to put it in bar and then show macro quick bar, and you'll have a button to push. And I had seven. All right. Oh, sorry. There's probably still a little bit of jet noise in there. But yeah, uh, you do step around. Uh, you take a shot on Mirror Crewman 2. And uh, you do hit him. Like, some of the phaser, it kind of brushes past the, the little flangey here. Uh, but even with cover, it's enough that Crewman 2 does go down. All right. And then I'd like to... Uh, it, can I say something quickly? You certainly can. We have to get me to a console. All right. Well, before you can do that, Mirror Crewman 4 is going to act. And he's going to rush up from the top of the room. And he's going to get in range. And he's going to do another area attack right about there. Good news is he whiffs it. He whiffs it hard. 
And it is your guys' turn again. I think Talyn is the only one who has not acted. Oh, yes. Um, what was I going to do? Um, how difficult would it be for me to do first aid on Zyn since he's not looking good? Well, and he's right next to me. Let's, uh, let's pull up first aid because it's been a while. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't think that actually helps him here. That doesn't help him here? Okay. Yeah, I mean... It just stabilizes. Yeah, so if he was oh, okay. actually injured, then yes, mm -hmm. you would do the first aid task. Um, but he's not okay. injured at the moment. Would I be able to attack Mir Krimen for? Can I see him or am I seeing from Vran? I think I'm seeing I from I think you're Vran. seeing from Vran. Let me... If ever in doubt, just basically use the ruler tool and draw it between your character and the person you're trying to shoot. And if it mm -hmm. goes through a wall, then yeah, you're probably seeing through a supporting character. So if I were to move there, mm -hmm. just shift past people, then I would be able to do that. You definitely okay. could. Since I have not done this type of combat before, how would I roll to attack Mirror Crewman 4? Uh, you would roll me a control and a security. And the difficulty would be a two. Okay. And that would, uh, yeah. So now you can roll me your uh, phaser damage, which I believe for you would be a six. Which, you know, six is enough. So, Talyn, you step around the corner, carefully aim your phaser, and put crewman four down. Wow, Talyn is a combat medic for sure. Mm-hmm. We have a battle mercy here. Yay! All right, so uh, I believe at this point uh, I am going to say that it's a new round. Yep, because everybody's gone. And uh, it is going to be Crewman 5's turn again. And uh, you can probably guess what's coming. Uh, another area attack, unfortunately. So let's see. Okay, so this could start be getting uh, this could start being a problem. Uh, so uh, all of you are going to take four damage, and we need I to need... spread out, guys. Yeah, I was gonna say are I need to know them? is anyone over their stress yet? Are, are we, we still in cover? Perhaps we could. I'm going to say no at this point, if only because if he aims right there, he can hit all of you pretty well. Um. I'm okay. And we're, and we're taking four? Yes, you're taking four. Uh, then I am not looking great, but I am still up. Okay. As oh, long, I have tons. Yeah, as long as uh, nobody is over their stress yet, you're fine. It just hurts. It hurts a lot. Uh, but it is now your guys' turn again. Um, I think Brand needs to step in there and Take this guy out. I will take care of the problem, Commander. All right, Van, go be a hero. Oh, um, Mir Mir Crewman three. Uh, I've got to stop about here, <laughs> and I guess I will take a shot at Crewman five. Okay. <laughs> you did uh, it again. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Commander. My phasers today, they, they are broken. <laughs> well, I'll roll the second one. That's yeah. The second Brand, one. Please, please, Bran. <laughs> you put him down. Uh, unfortunately, your phaser is starting to overload. And if that, take was, a, if that was... I was going to say, can I take a minor action and just toss it around the corner at Crewman 3? Uh, yes, but I will spend some threat to react to that. And the, uh, the threat spend is as you throw the phaser at, uh, Mirror Crewman 3, who's hiding around the corner, uh, he literally, uh, uses his own phaser like a baseball bat and tries to hit it back towards you. So, I'm just That's gonna roll here. Roll on that. <laughs> I'm just gonna roll here and see what happens. Uh, two? Yes. Oh, no. So, the phaser uh, does come right back to you, Vran. It's at your feet, and it explodes. So, I need you to roll me four challenge die, please. 
And I'm letting you do the is roll it? because if I do it, you'll be mad at me. Ooh, okay. So this is very important. Uh, and it's an injury. I, well, it's two injuries. I, because... I think Vran is dead. I I think he is. Well, Aww. let's let's walk through it. So you're you're unless you had your phaser on kill, it was on stun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, oh yeah. Then it's just it's just a critical. It's just a uh, lethal injury. Then. Yes. So what happens is the phaser comes back to you. It explodes. You take one injury because it's more than five damage and one attack. And then you also take another injury uh, because it exceeds your stress because you filled out your stress yep. track. So Vran goes down. He is lethally injured, which means if he does not receive stabilization, aka first aid, uh, before the scene ends, he is dead. Now, does the crewman batting the phaser count as his action? Uh, yes, it does. Okay. Which means so let, one of you could move in and first aid him. Let's have Talyn do that. Yeah, that was exactly what I was going to do. Okay. I just need to straight up move in. Let me get her sheet out of the way, though. I'm going to go here. So I'm at least not in the way of him mm -hmm. until he tried to come out. And then I'm going to do first aid okay. on Bran. So first aid, I believe, is a uh, daring medicine. At a difficulty of one. And that obviously counts as emergency medicine. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So good news. <laughs> you get a momentum. Ugh. Bad news. Uh, the complication is you cannot spend two momentum to get Vran back into the fight. He is effectively incapacitated until this scene is over. But alive. But alive, yes. He I have he drops a, his tail like an iguana or something as you're treating him. Mm -hmm. I have an idea. I'll I'll tell us after. I'll tell everyone after this for the damage. But it, it, this map mirrors what happened to the brand in my game, very closely. Cool. <clears throat> All right. Um, well, well uh, can we, can we spend two momentum. For oh, we don't we don't need to spend momentum to go. Nope. No, because we're, uh, we're I only have one guy left, and Riley and Zines can move. Can I step to the other side of Ran? Do I have that movement? Uh, I think you do. Yeah, you do. All right, I'd like to just step to here. Okay. And I will fire a phaser at Crewman 3. All right. And I would like to use a momentum to, to uh, get an extra die. Okay. Very nice, you get that momentum right back. Go ahead and roll me some damage. Yep, he goes down. And as you phase him to the floor, uh, engineering goes quiet except for the low thumb of the warp core. And you may move freely. Uh, Vran, at this point, uh, you're fluttering awake. Uh, everything hurts. Just everything hurts. So, Commander, uh, if we eject the warp core, this ship will have minimal power, which means all their shields will go down, and we'll be able to do whatever we want. Well, let's not eject the warp core of a somewhat viable starship. How about you just We can always off? recover it. We can always recover it. Uh, is there a way you can shut down the shields without ejecting the warp core? So I'll go to this console, mm -hmm. and I will see if there's a, if there's been any sort of lockout in place. Reasonable precaution. Roll me a insight engineering, please. Difficulty three. Um, I would like to burn a mo the momentum that I got. From the okay. phaser attack to uh, to get an extra dice here. Okay. And I don't have a focus for this. I don't think. What do I got? Uh, nope, nope, nope. Warp core mechanics. I don't think so. Mm, yes, it will. All right. Good. I will say this will succeed at cost. But I am going to take threat for that complication. 
Uh, okay. So what's going to happen is I get threat, and you realize almost immediately, Riley, is that there is indeed a lockout, and if things weren't bad enough, uh, apparently there was a failsafe that uh, if one of the mirror crewmen went down, that a warp core breach was begun. So you are now in an extended <sighs> task, a timed extended task. Uh, the oh, work track is going to be a 12. The magnitude will be a 4. The difficulty will also be a 4. And uh, I'm going to say 1 resistance because of the uh, computer lockout. Uh, in addition, you have a grand total of 8 intervals. Uh, to get this done, and if you don't, well, bye-bye, Pulsar. So, uh, the task for this is going to be, at first, is a daring engineering as you try to bypass the lockout. And I will say up to one other person may assist you, but they have to tell me how they're assisting you. So, the first thing I yell is, Vren, help, oh! I am sorry, uh, Commander! Commander, uh, can you help me out? Uh, I can try. Engineering was not my strong suit. Uh, daring, however, is. But uh, It I wasn't my strong try. suit when I left the academy, so... Um, I guess I'll go to the other... Um, the other console. Mm -hmm. And while he's doing his work, uh, I'll be the good backseat driver and like tell him the readings the timer all that kind of stuff to uh, things that he doesn't have to worry about all right you may assist him with your own daring engineering so i'd like to burn uh momentum again okay and does my focus still apply it does there we go very nice that's four successes even without the assist Which is good, because you didn't get an assist. All right, so now <laughs> what you're going to roll me is seven challenge die. And this will be the work done. All right, so this nice. will do a grand total of six work, unless you would care to re-roll those zeros or uh, spend to get rid of the resistance. Does, um, does the number we have there get us past the the lockout uh it does get you past the lockout which means the resistance does go away uh and it also has the added benefit of reducing both the magnitude and the difficulty however it does take two intervals to do so so you're down to intervals of six now i probably should back up here and say that if you spend a momentum at the task onset you can cut that interval in half so instead of taking two, you only do one. But it has to be spent before you do the roll. Okay. So we'll remember that for the next one. Yeah. And you should be at one momentum right now, I believe. Yes. All right. But yeah, you may certainly try again. Uh, same roll, same daring engineering, same assists. The difficulty is a three. All right, still no help from Zines, unfortunately. Okay, I would like to, again, use uh, momentum. All right, so you are down to no momentum. <sighs> All right, so unfortunately, uh, you try to do your best, but apparently somebody put a polymorphic virus into the computer system and uh, you make no progress. So, uh, you are now down to four intervals. Um, and I can't spend determination as the person assisting, correct? Correct. Okay. Do I think it would be easier just to eject the warp core? I would say yes, but the problem is if you eject the warp core, you might lose life support to critical areas. Hmm. 
do you still have your determination? I used it. Could always challenge a value. Well, let's, uh, let me see if I can do a uh, inventive use here. Uh, let's take a look at his values. Let's see. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I will say that if you do something, and let me let me think about what that specific something is. Uh, let's say this. If you cut the power to cargo bays one and two, and the way I'm flavoring this is it's better to beg for forgiveness than to ask for permission. If you cut the power to these two cargo bays and thus risking, you know, endangering the people that are in them, I will give you a point of determination. But that is the trade off. You must endanger the crew that is trapped in the cargo bays. How many people are in those cargo bays? Approximately 60 each. 120 people to save 180. The difficulty is you're going to have to, you really only have two rolls unless you start giving him threat. Mm-hmm. Which you're close. You got six on the work track, so left, and you get another breakthrough. I yell at Commander Zines. I should have just ejected the warp core. Um, I'll do it. Okay. I won't tell. Uh, no, I will tell. I will tell everyone what I'm doing so that they can tell the uh, Akagi to prepare. Okay. So, yeah. And um... then I will... Now the question guess... is, for that determination, would you like to re-roll the zeros on your last roll, or do you want to use the determination for this new roll? I think for the new one, right? I mean, it's up to you, really. You only need one more success on your old one. No, let's go for... Oh, uh... No, let's go for a new one, because then I, I will only need one success on that one, too. Okay. But I'll have three chances to roll criticals. Okay. Two ch two chances, two chances. Well, three if you include Zines assisting you, anyway. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, so, for that one, I guess I'm challenging. I get the determination back. Mm -hmm. I use it immediately to say uh, the more they overthink the plumbing, the easier it is to stop up the drain. And I start, instead of going directly at this problem, I start looking for a backdoor through some sort of uh, um, less necessary uh, program. Okay. Yeah, that works for me. All right. So it's daring, engineering, um, and 20 I I have a question. I might have an answer. Um, because uh, my my good friend Prayer has given me an idea. Mm -hmm. With Zines being an XO and my knowledge of command codes, can I use command instead of engineering um, for my assist? Yes, why not? And we're still doing daring or control? Uh, for you now, it's going to be a control command. Sounds good. <laughs> Very nice. So that counts. That's total six, isn't it? Yep, that's six already. Let's see what uh, Zines gets you. All right, you're oh, up nice. to seven, which means you get that's four, four momentum. momentum. And yeah, roll me, uh, roll me seven challenge die, please. All right, and sure enough, that is not only enough to stop the. Uh, the breach from happening, but you completely override all of the computer lockouts, and you have completed the extended task with maybe 10 minutes to spare. Can I uh, use two momentum to create an advantage? Sure, what's the advantage? I would like, well, maybe I don't need to spend the momentum to do this, but I'd like to drop the uh, shield around the bridge okay. and tell the Akagi that they can 
Well, inform the Akagi about it. All right. Well, what do you radio back to the captain? Uh, what What do you say to Mister Miller? Uh, captain, we've we've we have control of engineering. We've stopped the warp core breach, and I've lowered the shields around uh, around the bridge. That's great work, Commander. Much faster than I was expecting. We're gonna we're gonna pluck those people out of the bridge and show them their new home in the brig. All right. So Riley, not everything's good here because remember you did just endanger a hundred twenty people. I need you to roll me a total of twelve challenge die, please. And each challenge die is going to represent a, we'll say, ten crewmen. And if you roll any zeros, those 10 crewmen are dead. Well, meaning, all right, so for example, you rolled 9, which uh, that's 5 zeros. So that would mean 50 crewmen dead unless you spend momentum to re-roll those zeros. I would like to do that. So there was one, t- five zeros. Uh-huh. So I will re-roll those five. Mm-hmm. All right, so unfortunately... 20 crewmen are going to die, but you save the rest. Uh. Oof. You know what? It, it was. They were dead. They were already dead. And yeah, Zines, I think you would see that. You know, Riley's doing his best to save who he can, but yeah, those 20 life signs just wink out, unfortunately. Uh, Riley, did you pull power from somewhere else? I had to. Uh, I had to remove power so I could uh, prevent that warp core breach. It had to, had to be done, or we could have lost everybody. I'm not happy about it. No. N- neither am I. But. Yeah. We'll. It'll be something the captain will probably want to talk to you about. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, let's go about getting control of this ship back to the people that it actually should be. And uh, I'll head to the bridge to help mop up these crewman from another dimension um Vran are you able to walk you want to come with me I am uh I would do my best commander I uh I think I'm losing parts <laughs> uh tell you what buddy why don't you just stay here um the floor is nice and soft and warm um, yeah, why don't, why, why don't you just stay here? Uh, Lieutenant Talin, uh, make sure he's on the first transport out of here back to Yakagi for medical help. Certainly, sir. And, um, Zines will head to the bridge to link up with the security team there, um, to take control of the bridge. All right. So to speed things along just a little bit, you know, with the shields getting taken down, it's very easy for you guys to, you know, beam the mirror universe people on the bridge into your own brig. And uh, the good news is that brig technology is pretty damn good. So there's probably no danger of them breaking out. And I say that not to warn or foreshadow. I just, you know, matter of factly, it's pretty hard for them to break out. Um, However, we are going to skip ahead a few hours because I'm curious who would be briefing Captain Miller about what happened during this incident. Would it be uh, Riley himself? Would it be Zines? Or maybe would it be Talyn or our reptilian friend? Well, um, (laughs) if... How soon... A question... I hate answering a question with a question, but mm-hmm. how soon would we be able to turn the Pulsar back over to its regular crew? I would say that uh, it could happen within the next six hours, and part of that is, you know, not only fixing the damage that was taken when you guys attacked, but with the mirror attack. And part of that is the actual crew sort of getting out of the cargo bays, getting to their stations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Um 
and once uh once everyone's everything's clear i start bringing engineering teams onto the ship to so we can hurry that along as best as we can mm -hmm. well especially the damage that we caused during the fight um unless unless miller calls zines back to the akagi zines will stay on the pulsar to help coordinate until their crew their captain comes back okay so if that's if that's immediate then zines he'll he'll leave the akage and i guess talk to miller about everything or okay. give him a mission briefing okay i think while we're also getting everybody who was on the pulsar like back into their normal routines zarya would probably go over to the pulsar and like assist the pulsar's counselor in like helping anybody who is having issues from stress from this experience since obviously it would be kind of traumatic to run into alternate universe versions of yourself just a little okay that's that's an interesting question how many of these mirror universe crew are matches to people that are on the pulsar uh all 20 all of them had doppelgangers oh weird mm-hmm so, uh, we'll say in that case, uh, we will say that, uh, Captain Miller, uh, you are reading preliminary reports about the situation when you hear a chime at your door. Come on, Becca. Come in. And in will step Mr. Zines. The number one, it sounds like a tough fight over there. It was, um... I'd be lying if I said I was over all the wounds that I took, and Vran's going to need some time in sickbay. But uh, we were able to pull off what we intended to do, uh, took engineering, and then, as you know, took the bridge shortly thereafter. Um, we found out that they had uh, sabotaged the warp war that if any of the mirror universe members died, the warp core would um, start to breach. A particularly sinister trap. I'm still very curious about their motivations. Well, it's obviously that they are, in fact, a mirror. They... They are not the upstanding citizens that most Federation and Starfleet personnel are. They, in a word, are evil. Well, from the reports I've read from Captain Kirk and others on the Enterprise, it sounds like the Mirror Universe, while they certainly are not as, as you put it, as upstanding as we are used to, they always seem to act with a plan or an objective. Be nice to know what the objective here was. Well, hopefully Starfleet Intelligence or whatever prison we are going to put these people in will be able to get that information out of them. I look forward to reading that report. But back to Akagi. How are the, the injured being treated? Do they need more assistance? Um, I believe they are fine. Um, uh, medical teams and engineering teams have gone over to help the um, the Pulsar's crew. Um, I know uh, Commander Zarya has gone over um, to help with um, anyone who needs uh, a counselor or to help with um, walking past bodies of themselves. Um, and there seems to be something else that I think will need to be addressed. And at that point, I motion over to the, the table. Oh, well, let's have a seat. And while you were talking, I was, I was fishing out that Rami Linnell I'd been talking about. And I pour you a glass. What's on your mind, number one? So, I, I would like to start by saying that Commander Riley did an exceptional job at taking care of that warp core and the breach and what we later found out, another virus inside the warp core um, to stop every effort we had to stop it from breaching. 
I want to make that abundantly clear of how great of a job he did and how, as his commander and the commander of the away team, how proud I am of what he did. But, unbeknownst to me, until after, he took it upon himself to get extra power for what he was doing from one of the cargo bays. Which, from what I've put together from the Pulsar's computer, resulted in the loss of 20 lives. If the commander had asked you your opinion, what would you have recommended? If he needed extra power, there were other systems or other decks that we probably could have shut off instead of one of the cargo bays. But, again, we did not have the time to, what's the saying, pool the audience for ideas. I, if, if this was one of my students back at the academy and this was a simulation, I think you probably could have heard me yelling at him from here. But this isn't a simulation. And he saved 180 other lives or more, whatever the compliment that was still on the Pulsar was, at the loss of 20. Not to say that those 20 aren't going to weigh on me, and I'm sure they're going to weigh on him, but I just don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm at a loss. In your opinion, was it a reckless move on his part, or was it probably the right call at the time? I do think it was reckless, but given what was going through his head, which I I can't imagine. The only thing I can equate it to is being in a fighter or a shuttle and being under heavy fighter and just making decisions at, in split seconds. Given if I was in his shoes, probably would have done the same thing. But, and... And Zine's like antenna are kind of drooping. Like he's, like I said, like at a loss. Like he's kind of saddened. I just, I, I don't know. Look at it this way, Commander. Well, a casualty report of 20 is a heavy butcher's bill and not one that I want to take any sort of weight away from. But consider the positive that came out of the success that you and the away team managed to pull off. Not only did you save the crew of the Pulsar and its captain, you have tied a direct link back to the, the encounter with the Gorn, preventing a possible interstellar incident. That evidence wouldn't be as strong if the vessel were destroyed, not to mention that Akagi herself might have been badly damaged herself being so close to, to the Pulsar. So that sacrifice of those 20 people is not in vain. We have enough evidence to stop any further conflict with the Gorn. Like I said, giving up 20 lives for that, while I, it might feel wrong to say it, I think that's a worthy sacrifice. I do too. I think, I think I'm, I'm misunderstood. My loss is whether or not and how severe of a punishment. I want to commend him for his work. If this hadn't happened, I'd be putting him up for a medal. I, I guess I'm glad I don't have to make that decision, and that's why you have the extra, extra bars on your uniform. But if it comes to it, and if the captain of the Pulsar in any way wants to take actions against Riley, he'll, Maylock will have to go through me. I'm expressing my concerns to you, but I will back up Riley's decision. Well, if, if the captain has any problem with what happened on that ship, he knows he's going to have to come to me first. 
And if he has a problem, I'll remind him that before we came along, he was captive on his starship. And I think that'll probably put that argument to rest. But as far as what to do with Mr. Riley, I'll have the conversation with him and judge maybe where his head's at. I am hesitant to, to actually apply any further punishment. From what I know of Mr. Riley, and granted it hasn't been very long, I don't know if any more punishment is necessary. I imagine he's probably punishing himself. Public, punishing him, punishing himself. I know I would be. And I think that's why also maybe either you or I should possibly order him, if he doesn't himself, spend some time having conversations with Zarya about it, if he shows that this is weighing on him a lot. I think that's a great idea. We have a very talented counselor who I think could help him get through this. But as I said, I, I needed to come to you with what happened. But honestly, I don't. Uh, I don't think I would have made any other call in the same situation. And thank you, number one. I'm proud of the work that you and the away team did over there. It was a hot situation to begin with. And it sounds like those monsters from this mirror universe put in every sort of obstacle they could come up with to stop you and you overcame all of it that's that's no small feat you you should be proud of yourself well if if it's all right with you captain i think i'm gonna spend some time in sick bay and then sleep for the next generation i think that's a great idea take all the time you need all right captain have a good night you too, Commander. Good night. All right, and sort of our final shot is, uh, Captain, you kind of look out of your ready room window and camera pans away to show the Pulsar and the Akagi slowly beginning their turn towards the nearest starbase. And that's where we'll end the session. So, uh, before we cut off the stream, I did want to say well done. Uh, you guys handled a very difficult situation, and I could tell that you guys were feeling the pressure. So hopefully everybody had fun with that. Um, but I did want to get a feel, now that we've tasted pretty much everything the system has to offer, uh, what do people like, what do you not like, um, even if it's something I'm doing you don't like, you know, what, what sort of things would you like to see more of, I guess is the question. Tribbles. Okay, I, I mean, I, I can throw no. in some tribbles. <laughs> no, no, no. Are you sure, I, I did. Are you sure? <laughs> ELH, I did have a problem with you spending so much threat against us. <laughs> Don't do that. That was mean. <laughs> I gotta use it, man. We're very, we're very fragile. No, I'm just giving you a hard we're time. I think people. it's great. Cool. All right. Uh, the other thing uh, that we'll keep the stream on for is I'd like to bring up uh, advancement in terms of milestones and reputation. Now, obviously, as a uh, every other week game, uh, it does sort of slow down your progression. So what I'm going to do is this. Um, I'm going to say that any supporting character we use during a mission uh, from now on receives the benefit of two activations. So that means if you activate our reptilian friend again, uh, you get to do two things to his character sheet. And that applies to any supporting character, period, moving forward. Um, the other thing I'd like there to be a note of is in terms of reputation, um, I would like to sort of get your guys' opinion on ways we could do it. The way I'm thinking is that instead of doing a roll under system, we do a roll over system. So for example, um, if your reputation should, everybody's reputation should start at 10. If you roll a 10 or higher, your reputation goes up. Uh, you still get the benefit of if you roll a 20, uh, you will roll a crit in this instance, and you will more or less um, get two rep. And if you roll a 1, you will not get that rep. In fact, you will lose one rep. But the benefit to switching it is that it makes the DC higher the more rep you get, if that makes any sense. Um, so for everybody, uh, I need to know, let's see. So everybody has spent their determination... So that's some milestones. 
Uh, let's see. I think the grand total I have is that Miller, Riley, and Zarya. No, Miller, Zarya, and Zines. Uh, you're each rolling twice. Riley, because of the 20 people, you're only rolling once. So just roll, uh, each of you, just roll me a d20 and let's see what turns up. Also, as a correction, I ended up not spending my determination that during the past couple of sessions, just because I was trying to handle a lot of rules at once. That was no, something no. I didn't do. I'll give it to you either way. All right, so it looks like everybody has rolled over 10, so everybody's reputation will increase to 11. ELH, could I do the commendations sidebar on the in the command book on how to deal with reputation? I can read that for you real fast. Yeah, it says a command could, uh, your... tell me what page it's on. Ooh, uh, it's page 99. All right, well, as soon as my PDF decides to load, I will look at page 99. What it says is basically I can give the reputation I just earned to a character of lower rank to give them an extra d20 on their rep roll. No, oh, yes, you certainly may. And I would say it specifically says that this can be either you or the executive officers. So uh, Zines does have this option as well. I'm sorry, uh, I can give my reputation to somebody else? Uh, basically, instead of you getting the reputation, uh, you could give your dice roll to someone else so that they could roll another d20. Oh, okay. Uh, I rolled, but I, I don't I don't care. Uh, Zines will happily um, hand his roll off to Riley. Okay. Captain, are you doing the same? I think so, yeah. All right, Riley, roll me two more d20, please. And with that, <laughs> you actually go up to 13, no, 14 reputation, because that is a total of four successes. So this is important for you, Riley, because you are now squarely within metal territory. Um, <laughs> do you have the command book handy? Uh, I can in one sec. All right. Uh Back out of here. Command book. And medals start on page 97. So, uh, the way a war, uh, the way medals work is that uh, instead of getting 14 reputation, you would basically pay the, the reputation cost uh, up to four, because that's how much you earned in this go, to get a medal. So, for example, if you got the Cochrane Medal of Excellence, uh, which is for people who perform outstanding feats in the fields of science and engineering, it is a cost three. So you would go down to 11 reputation and you could get that medal kind of a thing. And every single medal has its own conditions. Interesting, interesting. Um, but I won't put you on the spot. I'll give you some time to think about it. And this is where we'll cut the stream. Uh, so anyone watching on Twitch or YouTube, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you guys had fun watching. And we will see these guys in two weeks. Bye-bye, stream. <laughs>